Three major categories of how controls are implemented are technical controls, which use some type of technology to actually improve our security. So firewalls, security software, and authentication are all different examples. We have administrative controls, which focus on processes and procedures for some aspect of security. So incident response plans, business continuity plans, and security awareness are all different forms of administrative controls. And then we have physical controls, which refer to some physical component and some of the most frequently discussed are locks and fences. Let's talk about some of the specific technical controls that we can implement. Permissions are the allowed actions that either a user or group has on objects, files, folders, systems, and so on. Permissions allow us to be very granular with what users can do. Whitelisting and blacklisting are useful to identify what's allowed and what's not allowed. Whitelisting is where we're only allowing certain things, and blacklisting is where we're rejecting specific things. Think about those definitions for a minute. It can be very, very hard to identify the specific things that we're trying to allow, but it can also be very hard to pick out the specific things that we're trying to reject. Systems and tools allow us to benefit from technology and automation in software, hardware, or firmware. Firewalls are network devices that either permit or deny certain types of traffic based on access control lists or ACLs, which is basically a list of rules. We have intrusion prevention systems or IPSs, which actually analyze traffic deeper and they stop known attacks. Then we have intrusion detection systems, which actually perform the same analysis as an IPS, but it's only gonna generate alert, it's not gonna actually stop it. Data loss prevention or DLP are systems that help to prevent data from leaving the organization. Frequently when we talk about DLP, those systems are monitoring email traffic and media like USB flash drives that you might plug in to take data out of the network. Endpoint detection and response or EDR are a newer type of system that's used to analyze endpoints much deeper than we previously could. The idea is to better identify suspicious behavior on systems. Network Access Control, or NAC, forces systems that are trying to connect to our network to meet a certain level of security. So up-to-date antivirus definitions, up-to-date patches, things like that. Sinkholing redirects traffic from the intended destination to a location of your choice through DNS. This way, traffic doesn't end up at malicious sites. Port Security looks at MAC addresses on a switch make sure that only authorized systems can connect. Sandboxing is a method where we can put systems or software into an isolated area for future analysis. That way, if we find something we don't like, we don't have to have our entire network compromised. Although administrative controls cover a lot of areas to include things like change control that identifies how we implement changes to our network, configuration management to track and approve changes to systems, business continuity and disaster recovery planning so that we can plan for disasters, personnel security that you need to be aware of includes separation of duties, where no single person can carry out multiple parts of a critical task. Separation of duties is great at preventing fraud because multiple people will have to come together and collude in order to do something malicious. A great example would be the person configuring systems and the person auditing are two different people. Succession planning allows us to be ready for somebody who might leave our organization. And then cross-training is where you have people learn secondary roles so that at a moment's notice, they can step in. Cross-training is also valuable for when employees are sick, not just when they leave the organization. Background checks are crucial to make sure that we hire suitable candidates. And then termination involves disabling or deleting all accounts and collecting any assets that that employee might have. You might see terminations handled differently depending on the type. So is it voluntary or involuntary and that person's role in the organization? We're gonna treat IT administrators or people that have elevated rights much differently than just a normal employee because they pose a lot greater risk, especially if they're disgruntled. Dual control is where at least two people are required at the same time to perform an extremely sensitive task. Some environments are actually gonna call this two-person integrity. One of the most common examples of this is in missile silos, where you would actually see two people on the opposite side of the room have keys, and they have to turn them at the exact same time to get the missiles to launch. Mandatory vacation forces people to take vacations and allows us to actually review their work and potentially identify malicious activity. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training about distracting interruptions or advertisements, and I'll see you next time.